Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies YouTube channel. Here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi guys, welcome to 5 Minute Biographies. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you to hit the subscribe to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the episodes we've got coming along in the future. And also to mention that you can read a transcript of the show on the website at 5minutebiographies.com and you can listen to the show on the podcast at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash pod. You can also follow us on Facebook. And if you enjoy the show and would like to say thanks by, say, buy me a coffee, please head on over to 5minutebiographies.com forward slash coffee to see how. Right, with that all being said, let's get on with the show and episode 53. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin is Charles Darwin is quite possibly the most famous scientist of the 19th century. His observations and theories would breed extreme resistance and would leave behind a mixed legacy, but one that included unquestionable change in the way that most of western science views the natural world. Nine in Shrewsbury, England, to Robert Darwin and Susanna, whose father was Josiah Wedgwood and was the second youngest of six children born to the couple. Although a fairly average student in most regards, Darwin grew up with an appreciation of the natural world from a young age. However, his father had a father had a different sort of study in mind, and while in the summer of 1825 his dad had him work as an apprentice doctor and compelled him to go to the University of Edinburgh Medical School, Darwin himself was far more interested in natural history, and by 1827 even presented a discovery, discovery concerning black spores that were often found in oyster shells, and his proof that they were in fact the eggs of another animal called a skate leech. This and other courses of study, including natural history, geology and the classification of plants and animals, helped Charles Darwin find passion in life, which was in natural history and the natural world. His poor grades deeply annoyed his father, who instead thought that his ob obsession with naturalism was merely a phase and he should get into something more practical in life, like becoming a member of the clergy. To this end, his dad sent him to Christ College in Cambridge, and Charles Darwin began studying to become a country preacher. Darwin's naturalistic tendencies, though, did not die while studying to be a man of the cloth. Instead, he became friends with another clergy member who himself was a shrewd naturalist, and Darwin, during his famous voyage, would even send samples and reports to him for safekeeping. Darwin continued to collect and observe specimens of the natural world, but as his final exams came around in 1831, Darwin knuckled down to the proper business of academics and did exceptionally well, coming in at number 10 out of over 170 candidates. Throughout the early summer of 1831, he continued to study natural history ravenously and read Paisley's Natural Theology of Evidences of the Existence of Attributes of the Deity, which had been published almost 30 years previously. In essence, it was a paper on intelligent de design, or how God used the laws of nature to help bring about his own personal designs. Having finished his course of study, a friend and mentor suggested to Charles Darwin that he should see a little bit of the world before he settled down to the life of a clergyman. Charles managed to join a trip as a gentleman scholar on the Despite his father's misgivings and feelings that this was a waste of time, Charles himself was excited for the opportunity that the Beagle would offer. The mission of the HMS Beagle was to chart the coast of South America, a voyage that was to last for five years, although unfortunately for poor Charles, he was seasick for all for poor Charles, he was seasick for almost the entirety of the trip. Even so, Darwin's passion as a naturalist endured and he collected a huge array of specimens from the Canary Islands, South Africa, the west and east coasts of South America, Australia and most famously his specimens from the Galapagos. During the voyage of HMS Beagle and in all the different places he visited, Darwin was consistently struck by the similarities as well as the differences between species that he encountered. 
This led him to wonder about the divergence of these species from a common ancestor, and this thinking assisted him in the thought process that led him in the thought process that led him ultimately towards developing what has become known as the theory of evolution. Charles Darwin's approach to his personal life was no less scientific than his professional one. Since returning from the Beagle voyage, he had been experiencing various illnesses, including a particularly uncomfortable palpitation, which led to him taking a break from his work and travelling to Scotland on the 23rd of June 1838. He returned home the following month and briefly turned his thoughts to marriage, scribbling notes onto two pieces of paper, one headed marry and the other not marry. After determining the pros and cons, he eventually decided that marriage was a good idea. This decision ultimately led him to making his cousin Emma Wedgwood his wife on the 29th of January 1839, five days after being elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. The couple had ten children, and although two died in infancy, George, George, Francis and Horace were all knighted and were fellows of the Royal Society just like their father. Charles Darwin was in no way unique in his views on evolution, and many other scientists were converging upon the same idea as he. Although his extensive naturalistic tendencies had actually led him to gather petitioners in the field, ultimately granting him the title of Father of the Discovery. This work ultimately led to the most famous book being published, the title of which, On the Origin of Species or the Preservation of Favoured Races in the Struggle for Life, which was published on the 24th of November 1859. 1859. Charles Darwin's book rocked the scientific world, meeting extreme pushback from more traditional members of society who correctly viewed it as a fundamental threat to their religious beliefs. However, despite this, the theory continued to gain traction and evolution has now become the mainstream scientific belief for the origin of species. Charles Darwin died on the 19th of April 1882 from heart failure at the age of 73, possibly due to a complication from an insect bite he had gotten during his famous voyage in 1831. Despite his death, the legacy of his work, legacy of his work continues to grow, and although some would utilise it f to forward the theories of racism and eugenics, it also helped to open up new fields of positive research regarding genetics and ancestry, and his famous theory of evolution will forever be synonymous with the name Darwin. We hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.